What's the scariest situation you've been in? I was about 11 years old and off school sick with the flu. My mum worked in the little shop literally 5 minutes away from her house, so she left me alone that morning to do her shift, and I was just chilling on the couch watching television. I heard the front door open, and assumed it was my mum home early. It was a random man who was heavily intoxicated. He went straight to the coffee table, and lifted up my bottle of cough medicine and downed the entire lot. I ran and hid in the bathroom and cried. There was no mobile phones back then or anything. After a while I had to run out in my pyjamas, really really sick and run along to my mum's work. The police turned up, and found the guy asleep on our couch. When I was 11, the house across the street from me caught fire. It was a fast moving electrical fire. The boy who lived there was 14, and he had a 9 year old sister. All of our parents worked full time, so we were latchkey kids this was the early 1990s. Anyway, the boy came hauling us down the street screaming for any adult to come out and help because his house was on fire and he thought his little sister was in there. I was the only one who heard him, so I grabbed his hand and ran into my house and called 911. He wanted to run into the burning house to find his sister and I knew he would die if he did. I was a scrawny spindly little girl, 56 and maybe 75 pounds, and he played defense on the football team at 58 and probably 150 to 170. He was panicking and sobbing and thrashing around, but somehow I found the strength to physically hold him back, until my little sister could run down the street, to find an actual adult. I guess it was adrenaline or something. All I knew, was that the only thing standing between that kid and a horrible death was me. The good news is, that his sister wasn't in the house after all. She'd gone to a friend's house without telling him. But for about 15 minutes, we were sure she was in there burning, and I had to stop him from burning with her. I've been in other scary situations since then, but because of how young we were, that one stands out. When I was hiking in the Tetons I got ran down by a grizzly bear. A friend and I were hiking in early September in a wooded area, off the trail we could hear a bear grunting. We were aware, and pulled our our bear mason kept hiking. Not being able to see where the bear was in the woods we continued on the trail. The grunting stopped, but before I knew it, I was thrown on the ground. A great weight was just crushing me, and started throwing me around like a rag doll. It began to tear into my hiking pack. I stayed on my stomach as best I could, and tried to cover my vitals. Next thing I know, is that my eyes and nose start burning. My friend started to spray his bear mace to get the bear off me. I'm still not sure how I did it, but I managed to unbuckle from my pack, get out of it, and crawl away from the bear. The bear continued to tear into my pack, before my friend's bear spray finally got to it. It turned and ran off. We left the area quickly, and waited till the bear spray wore off and hiked out. We got to a ranger's station, where I was taken to a hospital to be treated. My friend and a ranger went back to the attack site, to recover what was left of my things. Luckily I escaped with minor injuries and minor scarring a few broken bones and deep gouges. My stuff sadly didn't make it out alright. Favorite coat and pack ruined. But that is definitely the scariest situation I've ever been in. Overhearing my dad and his friend planning out the murder of my mother, sister and me. I had just turned 17, back in 1986. He was going to burn the house down, while we slept that night, he worked midnights. I wasn't supposed to be home. When I heard him going through the house getting, whatever items he wanted to save from the fire, and talking about the plan, I hid in the crawl space between our family room and hall closet. He left to take a load, to hide at his friend's house. I ran to call someone. Any one small town of 500 and only one sheriff who was his friend, but he had cut the phone lines. Thankfully my mom and sister came home, before he got back from his friend's house. My sister and I had to plead with our mom, to leave but she did. He abused her for 25 years. Now she's almost 80 and takes tap and jazz lessons, yoga classes, goes on all kinds of trips with her fellow seniors. She's awesome. I'm late, but here goes. When I was 13 I was spending the summer with my dad and his girlfriend. I have two brothers, age 11 and 10, that were also there. My dad got into an argument one night, while drunk nothing out of the ordinary, and he decided he was going to drive us about 30 miles back to our mom's house. 
he loads us all up in his 85 Camaro, and gets ready to take off when his best friend, Jess, jumps in the passenger seat. Jess was a small guy, and he knew that, if he tried to talk my dad out of drunk driving the only result would be my dad trying to beat him up, so he just got in the car, to try to mitigate any potential damage. We made it onto the interstate, and about 10 miles down the road before my dad started nodding off. We were coming up on an exit, and there was a divider for the exit and the interstate. My dad finally passed out right then, and we were heading straight for the divider going about 75 miles per hour. Jess, at the last moment, turned the steering wheel, and was able to get his leg into the brake, to stop us on the side of the highway. He pushed my dad over to the passenger side and drove us home with my direction. Even at 13 I was fully aware of my own mortality at the moment, and I was sure, that I was going to die. Jess, may he rest in peace, saved me and my two brothers that night, and I can never thank him enough. Edit, people have asked, so I decided to make the edit. Jess was mugged, and had his hand slashed open as a result. He went to the doctor for a couple of months for therapy. In the process, and I don't know how, but the doctors noticed that there was something else wrong. They did tests, and found out he had cancer, stage 4. He passed away a little over 4 years ago. While limited, I just want to say thank you for all the concern. I wouldn't have made it to 25 years old, if it weren't for Jess and people like him. I never told him thank you for that, and I wish I had. So, if you never thanked someone for something do it now. It would take 10 minutes. <laughs> Locked inside a gap store all night, when I was a teenager. I had to use the bathroom and the store was getting ready to close, so I rushed in real quick. I made a mess in the bathroom, so I took way longer than expected. When I got out everyone was gone. I freaked out, and tried many ways to get out. This was before cell phones, so when I tried using the store phone it required a passcode. I slept on the floor, and woke up at 7am, and waited slash hid in the bathroom for the store to open. 20 minutes after the store opened I casually walked out and no one saw me. I got home, and my mom was cooking french toast. I told her I decided to sleep at a friend's house, because we stayed up late watching a movie. My mom was cool, so it was nothing. I just needed more of an excuse, to not look awkward walking in the house at 8.30am in the summer. Had my french toast and fell asleep for another 2 hours. It turned out good in the end. Was in Iraq on my last deployment, and was conducting a foot patrol. As I pass a side street the tailgate of a truck drops and there are two insurgents laying there with a machinigan who immediately open fire. The whole world slows down, and seems to do one of those freaking matrix things, where you can see the bullets as I scream for everyone to take cover and run for cover myself. I felt my body jerk, and yank around and almost fall off my feet several times until getting behind a building for cover. I just knew I was dead, and could not feel the wounds, because of the massive damage. Checking over my body a canteen had been blown apart, a round had passed through a magazine pouch destroying 3 magazines of ammo, I had 2 impacts, that ripped up the cover of my helmet without punching through, and 1 round had passed through my uniform, across my chest, tearing at the inside of my body armor without touching me. 13 points of impact in all, and not an scratch on me, we later joked, that death must have been on vacation. When my husband died suddenly in our kitchen had been having panic attacks, and this event began with another of those. Only he cold and calmed down. His heart was beating so hard, and so quickly, that I could feel it. His face paled to a sickly color, mouth going white with a rim of blue purple at the edges. He gasped, and said help me, please help. It all happened so quickly, I still thought it was just a severe panic attack, and we were waiting for the ambulance. He stopped breathing. Shit got real. My blood felt like ice, as I shook him, and I shouted for help getting Harry out of his chair, to lie him down flat for CPR. I did chest compressions frantically, and puffed air into him. The air just kept coming back out. It made groaning noises as it did so. I knew my attempts were not working. The ambulance arrived, and I was shooed away, as they worked. My husband's heart was restarted two times, but he officially expired at 5.02am. Scariest, guiltiest, most horrible thing I have ever experienced or see ever. Bar none. I was in Brazil, and traveling by bus into Argentina. 
Arriving at the border I realized that I didn't have the proper documents to get across. So I bribed the bus driver to hide me in the cargo hold and smuggle me over the border. That was a scary few minutes. Definitely brown pants time. One time I had sleep paralysis and there was a huge goose right next to me. It was like 2 meters big and it just watched me while I tried to scream at the top of my lungs. Sailed on the Andaman Sea to the coast of Myanmar in a huge thunderstorm. Bad call by the crew leaving the island we were on just before the storm hit us. We saw lightning strike around us a few times and were on a tiny wooden ship with absolutely no protection. The Burmese captain was trembling behind the wheel. I truly felt it could be over at any moment and was starting to make my peace with not making it back home. We drank many many beers after making it through. I was a wee lad of 14 years old in the attic where our PC was located playing RuneScape and making homework. Later in the night, around 10pm I heard some noises downstairs and saw a light turned on. I figured my parents had returned from visiting family. A man that looked a lot like my uncle started coming up the stairs slowly, but he wasn't my uncle. We made eye contact for a solid 5 seconds just in complete shock. He bolted back downstairs. I grabbed the nearest thing I could use as a weapon which were some scissors I had near me. I was screwed basically. I can't remember how much time had passed, but I didn't have a mobile phone with me at the time. I was absolutely petrified this entire time. And then I saw my aunt log on to rune escape my aunt, dad and cousin all played as well at the time. I told her what happened, she called the cops, and within 10 minutes everyone was home. There were multiple knives left on the stairs, and they got in through a garden. I had to describe the man I saw, and I was very bluntly racial profiling, my beat to the cops. Definitely scariest moment of my life, I thought I was going to die right there in th. Okay, so I'm at a house party, in a rather shooty neighborhood. One guest call him Kyle is selling and smoking meth, along with his girlfriend Beth. Beth is around 6 months pregnant, drinking, smoking, so we know that she makes great choices, but Beth decides to beat up a girl with a cast on her leg. Hair pulling, slapping, eventually leads to the girl in the cast punching, Beth in her stomach. A cry for Kyle rings out. Kyle however is too busy trying to show his underdeveloped clock to a group of 16 year olds at the party. Kyle departs in a meth fueled haze, pants around his ankles, he grabs his gun, leaves the jeans behind, and rushes to help. Kyle talks to Beth, and sets out to shoot the girl in the cast. She however had made her escape at this time, but Kyle still scoured the place looking for her, while Beth started to bleed fairly badly. Sirens rang out, this is unfortunately where my part ends, as being the wily 17 year old that I was, I ran for it. Barely escaping to my car, and making a very slow getaway, trying to be undetected. Pretty scary at the time, but the adrenaline made it seem fun. When my now husband was hospitalized with pneumonia, he started off with just a normal bout of a cold, but suddenly it was a chest infection at least that's what the doctor said, but he couldn't keep the antibiotics he gave him down so within a day it had turned into pneumonia. He was hospitalized, because his sats were so low. I remember ringing my grandparents that night, because all I wanted, was to hear my granda's voice, and breaking down on the phone to him, because I was so scared, and then had to go back putting on a brave face because my husband was so scared too they tried him on a new antibiotic which gave him muscle spasms as an allergic reaction starting in his face so i thought he was having a stroke they continued to give him this antibiotic levofloxacin in despite this and he ended up having a seizure i was rushed out of the room and i had to ring his mother to tell her i thought he was going to die it was without a doubt the scariest thing I've ever gone through, and it all happened about 12 days before we were meant to get married, so we also then had to postpone the wedding. Fun times. When I was 10 I woke up around midnight to severe pain and crawling sounds in my left ear. I yelled for my father, but he wasn't around. He had gone out to a bar with a friend after I went to sleep. I spent a long time screaming in pain and trying to look into my ear on the mirror and pouring water into it. Turns out a sea croach had laid an egg in my ear and they were hatching that night. The empty egg came out about a week later. I had roach legs come out of my ear for years while cleaning it with tips. <laughs>